filmsimplified.com. But it seems that we lost all information in the chair. Of course, we have hundreds of ways to fix this, but what we're looking for here is a simple and easy solution that will work with any image with a couple of clicks. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at a very easy and simple technique that will allow us to create an image that does not look cinematic at all. Let's see how. I guess we're all familiar with this bright image look. Uh, it's the look you see usually in travel blogs, in cooking shows, uh, in real estate tours. So the colors are vibrant while still looking natural. Uh, the uh, It seems like there's no lost information at all in shadows or highlights, everything is correct. And the image is like vibrant and bright. However, the image does not look cinematic at all, but it's a very nice look. Now, I do understand that you can always over tweak the image, like work on every detail and make the image look correct and spend a lot of time working on each shot. But that is usually not feasible, especially for larger projects. So what I want to show you here is a very simple technique that you that allows you to achieve this look every time with very few clicks. Let's start. Let's take a look at this image. So this is like a real estate film. And we need to make the image look bright, the colors look vibrant, uh, while still looking natural, and we need to achieve all that without losing details. Now, before we start in this image, keep your eye on this chair in the back. Notice the details in this chair. Now, before I show you the technique that we're going to be using, let's first take a look at the easiest way to color correct the image, auto color. So I'm simply going to click on the auto color button here, and let's take a look at the image. It's bright and vibrant, and for the most part looks okay. But it seems that we lost all information in the chair. Of course, we have hundreds of ways to fix this. So you have windows, keying, gradients, and I'm sure there are many other ways. But what we're looking for here is a simple and easy solution that will work with any image with a couple of clicks. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to delete all the gallery images here, and I'm going to grab a still from this approach so we can uh, compare the images later. So I'll simply right click, grab still, and this is the still we just grabbed. So this simply remembers the state of the image, you know, with with all the current settings. And I'll reset everything, I'll just hit the shortcut key and I reset all the nodes. And before we start, let's simply open the waveform. So I'm simply going to click here, switch to waveform, and keep your eye on the waveform. What I'm going to be doing now is to switch to the primaries, and here we have a controller for shadow and a controller for highlights. So I'm simply going to increase shadows all the way and reduce highlights all the way. So the shadows will be set to 100 and the highlights will be set to minus 100. Why did we do that? Take a look at the waveform. I'm going to disable the changes and enable. We simply compressed the dynamic range of the image. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. So we simply got the highlights uh, closer to the midtones and the shadows also closer to the midtones. So we compressed the available dynamic range. And then I'm going to add a new node. So Command and S, and I just added a new node. Keep in mind that the new node sees the image the way it was received from the node before it. So it only sees the compressed dynamic range. So now while the new node is selected, I'll click the auto color button again. And now take a look at the image. It's bright and vibrant. While we retained all the information in the chair, let's compare both approaches. So I'm going to double click on the gallery still and notice the difference between both images. Notice how here the highlights are a bit overexposed and we lost information in shadows. However, with the new approach, Note how the highlights are protected and the shadows are protected with very little clicks. But unfortunately, it's not all roses. Uh, yes, the image looks better, but notice a problem. I'll move the image here and notice the halo around the mirror. There is like a bright area that seems to follow the mirror wherever it goes and it's also visible in other edges. So this halo will appear around high contrast edges in the image whenever you use the shadows and highlights controller. However, there's a simple fix. First, I'll select the first node. So the node where we controlled the highlights and shadows. And the primary wheels to the top right, we have the midtone details controller. This is designed to solve this particular problem. So I'll first start by increasing midtone details and notice how much more visible the halo is. Notice that when I move the image, the halo clearly follows the mirror. 
And if we reduce the midtone details all the way, we lose a lot of information. So it's just about finding the sweet spot where you don't lose a lot of information, but you also do not see the halo. And notice the image now. It's bright, and for the most part, it looks way more natural. Let's reduce this even more and much better. And of course, you can continue working on the image from here if you wanted to. So you can add a new node and... For example, maybe I bring the gamma down a bit. Notice that even when we brought the gamma down, still we did not lose information in this chair. Now let's try this technique on more images. So this image, I will simply start by clicking on auto color. And this is the image we have. Reset, increase shadows, reduce highlights, add a new node, use auto color in the new node. And notice how we have way more information in the image. And of course we can correct it if you wanted with midtone details. This image also, I'll hit auto color. Notice how we lost information in the shadows area. I'm simply going to grab a still, reset, shadows, highlights, add a new node, auto color, and notice how much more vibrant the image look. We'll just add a new node and maybe bring the gamma down a bit. And let's compare it to the other one. Notice the difference between both approaches. As we discussed earlier, yes, you can uh, always achieve better images by going into each and every detail, maybe brightening this, darkening that, and working on the image more. But I bet in most projects, or for most projects, you don't really have the time to do this for each and every shot. So I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com, where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and we'll take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com